Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries in John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This is going to be part three of the Saints series. Uh, we're going to be reading a chapter out of Hosea. I think it's Hosea 11, but I, I got to do some background before we read it. Um, if you check out my community page, I have a link to some very interesting stories that are not safe for you know where by the you know who's about the you know who's. And um, I did a re review on um, No Time to Die, you know, the 007 James Bond film. Yeah, that's some interesting things you watch they'll are they're gonna have a black bond girl i mean a black woman female well a black female as as 007 well they already did uh yeah but uh yeah you should you know the video i did on world truth is only i don't know 15 minutes long some some things um It'll come to pass, so my opinion. All right, here's a little, uh, let's go to 1 Samuel chapter 8. You know, I've read this before, but we're going to read it again. 1 Samuel chapter 8. Now remember, Samuel was a prophet of the Lord. He was a, a good prophet of the Lord, but uh, they were... He had uh, children that were nothing like their dad. And the they did some really bad things. And um, if I remember correctly, they were seducing women and all kinds of things. So, you know, they, they took bribes and, you know, they were nothing like their dad. And... You know, this thing wasn't, I'm sure it wasn't unknown to Samuel, but yet he refused to, re, re, um, how would you say, remove his children from, re, you know, doing these bad things. So, 1 Samuel chapter 8. And it came to pass when Samuel was old that he made his sons judges over Israel. Now the name of his firstborn was Joel, Joel, and the name of his second Abiah. They were judges in Beersheba, and his son sons walked not in his ways. They, whose ways did they not walk after? Samuel. They were nothing like their father, but they turned aside after lucre, and took bribes, and perverted judgment. Then all the elders of Israel gathered themselves together and came to Samuel unto Ramah and said unto him, Behold, thou art old, and thy sons walk not in thy ways. Yeah, we don't want your sons. Now make us a king to judge us like all the nations. We want an earthly king. We don't want God the Father as our king. You know, the thing is, um, when God the Father was the king, you know, like when he took Israel out of Egypt, uh, Moses was his spokesman, but he was their king. And thing is, uh, when they went into the land of Canaan, I forget which Canaanite tribe they were fighting against, but the Lord threw down hailstones that weighed a talent which is about 70 pounds or about 30 kilograms can you imagine being hit in the head by a chunk of ice uh, traveling at 90 miles an hour that weighs about 70 pounds or not uh, 30 kilograms uh, boy what a headache that would be that's an excedrin headache yeah give me three three excedrins right now, if you remember that commercial you're kind of old 
But, uh, you know, how would you like to have a king like that fighting for you, fighting for his, his uh, subjects or his citizens? Yeah. But no, the uh, Israelites, they don't want that. Now make us a king to judge us like all the nations. Yeah, we want to have an earthly king just like, uh, you know, all the satanic nations around us. Verse 6. But the thing displeased Samuel when they said, Give us a king to judge us. And Samuel prayed unto the Lord. Hey, Samuel, you should have gotten rid of your kids. Uh, remove them from being judges. Should have found some spirit-filled people to do the job instead, right? And the Lord said unto Samuel, Hearken unto the voice of the people in all that they say unto us, uh, unto thee. For they have not rejected thee. They haven't rejected you, Samuel. But they have rejected me that I should not reign over them. According to all the works which they have done since the day I brought them up out of the land of out of Egypt, even unto this day, wherewith they have forsaken me and served other gods, so do they also unto thee. Now therefore hearken unto their voice, how be it, yet protest solemnly unto them, and show them the manner of a king that shall reign over them. Now remember, an earthly king is going to have earthly faults you know all humans have faults only god is sinless verse 10 and samuel told all the words of the lord unto the people that asked of him a king and he said this will be the manner of the king that shall reign over you he will take your sons and appoint them for himself for his chariots and to be his horsemen and some shall run before his chariots. In other words, he's going to draft your sons to fight in his wars. Oh, yeah. And you know what happens when you get drafted in a, in a war? People die. Yeah. Would you rather have the Lord throwing down talent, uh, hailstones upon the heads of the enemy? Or would you rather take a chance your son dies in combat boy that's such a hard choice huh 12 and he will appoint him captains over thousands and captains over fifties and will set them to ear his ground and to reap his harvest and to make his instruments war and instruments of his chariots he's going to take your kids they're going to till his till the ground they're going to reap the harvest they're going to be the blacksmiths making uh you know, the weapons of war and for the chariots. And he will take your daughters to be confectionaries. What's a confectionary? It's somebody, you know, it's like a somebody that makes desserts and to be cooks and to be bakers. So they're going to cook his, his meals. They're going to bake his bread and they're going to make his desserts. And he, the king, will take your fields and your vineyards and your olive yards, even the best of them, and give them to his servants. And he will take the tenth of your seed and of your vineyards and give to his, to his officers and to his servants. And he will take your men servants and your maid servants and your goodliest young men and your asses and put them to his work. And he will take the tenth of your sheep, and ye shall be his servants. And ye shall cry out in that day, because of your king, which ye have chosen, you. And the Lord will not hear you in that day. Yep, you want a king? This is what he's going to do. He's going to take your kids. He's going to take your land. 
He's going to take your crops and he's going to tax you. And you're going to cry. You're going to cry to me in that day and I'm not going to listen to you because this is what you chose. This is what you want. Now, guess what? That's what the tithe was for. The tithe was the 10% was to support the tribe of Levi, the tribe of the uh, of which Moses and Aaron were. They were the tribe that was to serve God in the tabernacle, later the temple. You know, in Western nations, our taxes are probably at least 50%. I mean, at least, you know, when I took accounting, a uh, professor held up a loaf of bread that was like a dollar fifty or so back then, and he said, "There's a hundred different taxes on this loaf of bread, over a hundred, and he listed them all. You know, there's tax on the tractor, tax on the diesel, tax on the roads that it travels on, the trucking company that takes it taxes it." Uh, the miller that grinds the, the wheat, uh, he pays a tax. The wheat pays a tax. The baker pays a tax. You put yeast in it, it pays a tax. The water that you put in the bread, it pays a tax. Uh, when you fire up the ovens, the electric or whatever gas is taxed. There's a hundred different taxes on that. Taxes on the land that you grow it on. Taxes on the fertilizer. And I'm just, you know... I'm just touching the surface. 10% tax. Sounds good, don't it? Verse 19. Nevertheless, the people refused to obey the voice of Samuel, and they said, Nay, no, we're going to have a king over us, that we may be like all the nations, that our king may judge us and go out before us and fight our battles. I think I'd rather have the Lord fighting in the battle and throwing down hailstones. What do you say? And Samuel heard all the words of the people, and he rehearsed them in the ears of the Lord. And the Lord said unto Samuel, Hearken, or listen, hearken unto their voice, and make them a king. And Samuel said unto the men of Israel, Go ye every man unto his city. So who became king? Well, originally it was uh, Saul, King Saul, who was replaced by uh, David, who later became, you know, Solomon. And then Solomon, his son became the king. Now you got to realize Solomon had built a temple. Solomon had uh, around 900 to 1,000 wives and concubines. Concubine is kind of like a second wife sort of like a girlfriend on the side, you know. She doesn't have the same rights as a wife, but uh you know, a lot of guys think, "Oh boy, that what a what a uh fantasy that would be." Can you imagine having 15 or 20 women uh yelling in your ear at the same time? Uh I can't. No. Yeah, I just yeah. But uh Think about it. All those women and their children have to be housed and clothed and fed. How much taxes does that require? Yeah. And the temple and the king's palace and the king's guards and the army. You know, the people were being taxed and they were taxed and they were taxed. Yeah. Think about it. All right. So they wanted, Israel wanted a human earthly king. And they rejected the Lord. And let's face it. People like to have fame. They like to have money and power. Personally, money never really meant that much to me, but. 
it's a necessary evil, I guess you could say. So, all right. So, King Saul started off decent, but by the end of his life, he had become pretty bad. David started off really good, but uh, the little thing about uh, Uriah wasn't very good. In case you don't know it, he had Uriah killed and stole his wife. And then Solomon. Solomon started off really good. Uh, started getting into witchcraft. And I think, if memory serves me correctly, he, uh, by the end of his life, when he was writing the um, Proverbs, he realized what a foolish thing uh all the idols were. So I think he started off good uh, messing up and then returning unto the Lord. But then Solomon's son takes over and this is where we are now. First Kings chapter 12. The Israel and Judah become divided something you'll probably never hear in a demon nominational church because they want you to think that uh, a certain group in the Middle East that calls themselves by that name are all of Israel when there was 12 tribes and uh, they're not they have the 12 tribes had different attributes and if that group of people in the Middle East don't fit those attributes and the prophecies, either God lied or they're not who they say they are. Take your pick. Personally, I don't think they are who they say they are. But, hey, what do I know, right? I'm just the guy that's read the Bible a couple of times. All right, let's go to 1 Kings chapter 12. And Rehoboam went to Shechem, for all Israel were come to Shechem to make him king. Northern Israel. And it came to pass when Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who was yet in Egypt, heard of it, for he was fled from the presence of King Solomon, and Jeroboam dwelt in Egypt. That they sent and called him, and Jeroboam and all the congregation of Israel came and spake unto Rehoboam, saying, Now Rehoboam, R-E-H-O-B-O-A-M, was the son of Solomon. And they said, Verse 4, thy father made our yoke grievous. What's a yoke? Well, it's, uh, you know, you put a, it's the collar that you put on oxen so that they could plow or a horse. You could put a yoke upon them. It was a burden. That's what a yoke was. Thy father made our yoke grievous. Now therefore make thou the grievous service of thy father and his heavy yoke, which he put upon us lighter, and we will serve thee. In other words, your father put all these heavy taxes on us. You know, we're, we're supporting all the temple, we're supporting all these wives, uh, you know, a thousand households. And it's not just a thousand women, it's got to be children too, you know. Lighten up on us, buddy boy. And he said unto them, Depart yet for three days, then come again to me. And the people departed. And the king Rehoboam consulted with the old men that stood before Solomon his father while he yet lived and said, How do, you, how do ye advise that I may answer this people? And they spake unto him, saying, Now these are the wise old men saying, If thou wilt be a servant, a servant unto these people this day, and wilt serve them and answer them, and speak good words to them, 
then they will be thy servants forever. Huh, sounds like good advice to me. Verse 8, But he forsook the counsel of the old men, which they had given him, and consulted with the young men that were grown up with him, and which stood before him. Yeah, let's, let's talk to the young guys, the young whippersnappers. And he said unto them, What counsel give ye that we may answer this people who have spoken to me, saying, Make the yoke which thy father did put upon us lighter? And the young men that were grown up with him spake unto him, saying, Thus shalt thou speak unto this people that spake unto thee, saying, Thy father made our yoke heavy, but make thou it lighter unto us. Thus shalt thou say unto them, My little finger shall be thicker than my father's loins. Hmm. And now, whereas my father did lay you with a heavy yoke, I will add to your yoke. My father hath chastised you with whips, but I will chastise you with scorpions. Yeah, my father's little finger that was, uh, you know, the taxes, or my little finger is going to be thicker and heavier than my father's calves. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to, you think you got a heavy burden now, you wait, I'm going to add to it. Yeah, you, you think my father gave you a whipping? I'm going to hit you with scorpions. Hmm. Verse 12. And Jeroboam and all the people came to Jeroboam, uh, Rehoboam. So Jeroboam and all the people came to Rehoboam, the king, the third day, as the king had appointed, saying, Come to me again the third day. And the king answered the people roughly and forsook the old men's counsel that they gave him and spake to them after the counsel of the young men saying my father made your yoke heavy and i'm gonna i will add to your yoke my father also chastised you with whips but i will chastise you with scorpions therefore wherefore the king hearkened not unto the people for the cause was from the lord that he might perform his saying which the Lord spake by Ahijah the Shilonite unto Jeroboam the son of Nebat. So when all Israel saw that the king hearkened not unto them, you know, the king wouldn't listen to him, the people answered the king, saying, What portion have we in David? You know, King David. Neither have we inheritance in the son of Jesse. To your tents, O Israel. Hmm, what does it mean to your tents? Well, just remember, if you don't like an area and you, you got a tent, you just pack it up and leave. You can't do that with a stone or, or wooden house, can you? No, you're stuck there. Or you leave it behind. To your tents, O Israel. O Israel, now see to thine own house, David. So Israel departed unto their tents. But as for the children of Israel, which dwelt in the cities of Judah, Rehoboam reigned over them. Then King Rehoboam sent Adoram, who was over the tribute. He was an IRS agent. He was the tax collector and all Israel stoned him with stones no he didn't go to that CBD clinic that wasn't that uh, uh, good stoner stuff that they sell in Colorado with the, the weed no they stoned him with stones that he died therefore King Rehoboam made speed to get him up to his chariot to flee to Jerusalem See, the king saw his tax collector got killed. And he decided, I better hightail it back home before they get me too. 
Verse 19. So Israel rebelled against the house of David unto this day, and it came to pass when all Israel heard that Jeroboam was come again, that they sent and called him unto the congregation and made him king over all Israel. There was none that followed the house of David, but the tribe of Judah only. So here it is now. You got Israel left Judah. You got a king of Judah. And now you got a king of Israel. Hmm. Okay. And when Rehoboam was come to Jerusalem, he assembled all the house of Judah with the tribe of Benjamin and hundred and fourscore thousand chosen men, which were warriors, to fight against the house of Israel to bring the kingdom again to Rehoboam, the son of Solomon. That's 180,000 warriors. But the word of God came unto Shemaiah, the man of God, saying, Speak unto Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, king of Judah, and unto all the house of Judah and Benjamin, and to the remnant of the people, saying, Thus saith the Lord, Ye shall not go up, nor fight against your brethren, the children of Israel. Return every man to his house, for this thing is from me. They hearkened therefore to the word of the Lord, and returned to depart according to the word of the Lord. Then Jeroboam built Shechem in Mount Ephraim, and dwelt therein, and went out from thence, and built Penuel. And Jeroboam said in his heart, Now shall the kingdom return to the house of David, if, if this people go up to do sacrifice in the house of the Lord at Jerusalem. Then shall the heart of this people turn again unto their Lord, even unto Rehoboam king of Judah, and they shall kill me and go again to Rehoboam king of Judah. In other words, um, if the people of Israel go to Jerusalem to worship at the temple, they're going to have a change of heart and go against the new king of Israel. And he's worried about this. So how is he going to keep the people from going to Jerusalem to worship in the temple? Ah, verse 28. Whereupon the king took counsel and made two calves of gold the golden calves and said unto them, it is too much for you to go to Jeru up to Jerusalem. Behold thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. Huh? And he set the one up in Bethel and the other put he in Dan. Do you know what Bethel means? Beth means house. L is short, I think it's a contraction for uh, God. So Bethel basically means house of God. Yeah. Boy, I'm going to put up a golden calf in Bethel, the house of God. And the other he put in Dan. And this thing became a sin. Yeah, of course it is. Golden calves, you're going to have your people worship golden calves. And this thing became a sin, for the people went to worship before the one, even unto Dan. And he made a house of high places and made priests of the lowest of the people, which were not of the sons of Levi. Ooh, only Levites were to be servants to serve the Lord. What does it mean, the lowest of the people? Now, he's not talking about short people. People of low morals. And Jeroboam ordained a feast in the eighth month, on the fifteenth day of the month, like unto the feast that is in Judah. And he offered upon the altar. So did he in Bethel, sacrificing unto the calves that he had made. And he placed in Bethel the priests of the high places which he had made. Satanists, right? So he offered upon the altar which he had made in Bethel the fifteenth day of the eighth month, even in the month which he had devised of his own heart, and ordained a feast unto the children of Israel, and he offered upon the altar and burnt incense. 
So now, not only did they uh, break off from Judah, now they're uh, rebelling against the Lord. All right, with that background information in mind, let's go to Hosea chapter 11. Hosea is a wonderful book. It's a story about a man and his unfaithful wife who are reconciled back together. But actually, that's just a symbolism for the Lord and his wife Israel, who was unfaithful. Um, if you look on my playlist, I have a book, um, Minor Prophets playlist, and the book of Hosea. I did a com well, I uh, I don't did I do it or no? I think um, uh, minor the minor prophets. I did a commentary, but it was by somebody else. I think his name was Rath, Roth, Rath, I forget his name. Uh, somebody did an excellent study on Hosea, and I read the book, I think. You know, when you've done over 1,500 Bible studies, it's kind of hard to remember them all, you know? So let's read Hosea chapter 11. The Lord says, when Israel was a child, then I loved him and called my son out of Egypt. Um, where did Christ go when he was a baby? When King Herod was trying to kill him? Went to Egypt. Out of Egypt have I called my son. Oh, yeah. As they called them, so they went from them. They sacrificed unto Balaam. What was Balaam? Well, Baal, or Baal, was, it's just a generic name for Lord. But it had become so uh, tied in with Satanism. So when you see Balaam, Baal, Baal, Balaam, uh, you'll know that that is basically it's Satanism. They sacrificed unto Balaam and burned incense to graven images. You know, like the golden calves. I taught Ephraim also to go, taking them by their arms, but they knew not that I healed them. Who's Ephraim? Ephraim was the main tribe of northern Israel that split off from Judah, or what we just read. Verse 4. So, when, you know, when you're talking about Ephraim, they're talking about Israel. So, verse 4. I drew them with cords of a man, with bands of love, and I was to them as they that take off the yoke on their jaws, and I laid meat unto them. So, I, the, the Lord is saying, basically, I took uh, the heavy burden from their jaws and I gave them food to eat. Verse 5. He shall not return into the land of Egypt. Right. Israel left Egypt under Moses. Remember, they're not going to go back. But the Assyrian shall be his king because they refused to to return. Um, the Assyrian Empire went in to Israel and conquered it and took them all into slavery. They even took a portion of Judah too. They tried to take Jerusalem, but they couldn't do it. An angel of the Lord killed uh, many, many thousands of their soldiers that had surrounded Jerusalem. So they had taken great numbers of Israel captive and took them into the Assyrian Empire to be slaves. So you guys don't want God the Father as your king? No problem. 
but the Assyrian shall be his king because they refuse to return. What do you mean they refuse to return? They refuse to return to the Lord. Verse 6. And the sword shall abide on his cities and shall consume his branches and devour them because of their own counsels. Branches. You know, they're family trees, right? And my people are bent to backsliding from me. You ever heard of somebody that's backslidden? That means they're Instead of going forward towards the Lord, they're going back into the world. And my people are bent to backsliding from me, though they call them to the Most High, none at all would exalt him. How shall I give thee up, Ephraim? How shall I deliver thee, Israel? How shall I make thee as Admas? How shall I set thee as Zeboim? Mine heart is turned within me, my repentings are kindled together. I will not execute the fierceness of mine anger. I will not uh, return to destroy Ephraim, for I am God and not man, the Holy One in the midst of thee, and I will not enter into the city. They shall walk after the Lord. He shall roar like a lion. When he shall roar, then the children shall tremble from the west. Uh, what is Jesus called? The Lion of the tribe of Judah? They shall tremble as a bird out of Egypt and as a dove out of the land of Assyria. And I will place them in their houses, saith the Lord. Verse 12. Ephraim compass, compasseth me about with lies. Ephraim, the main tribe of Israel, they surround the Lord with lies, and the house of Israel with deceit. But Judah yet ruleth with God, and is faithful with the saints. There you go. So at this point in time, Ephraim, Israel had gotten into idolatry and Satanism, but Judah is still faithful with the Lord and with a remnant of saints. But that's going to change too. Uh, read Jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 8. God got fed up with Israel and divorce them. Yeah. But he didn't divorce Judah. But yet he said that Judah was even worse than Israel. Yeah. All right, let's go to Jeremiah 3. Uh, now remember, King... Uh, king Josiah was a good king of Judah. He was a good king. And he was trying to bring people back to the Lord. And there was a revival for a period of time, but revivals always seem to be short-lived. So, all right, Jeremiah 3 and verse 6. The Lord said also unto me in the days of Josiah the king, Hast thou seen that which backsliding Israel hath done? The northern kingdom people. She has gone up upon every high mountain and under every green tree, and there hath played the harlot. What's a harlot? It's a whore. And I said after she had done all these things, turn thou unto me. You know, the Lord's watching this whore, and he's asking her, turn thou unto me. Return to me. Come back. I love you. But she returned not. And her treacherous sister Judah saw it. Verse 8. And I saw when for all the causes whereby 
backsliding Israel committed adultery, spiritual adultery. I had put her away and given her a bill of divorce. The Lord divorced Israel. Boy, you'll never, 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 never hear this verse read in a denominational church. You'll hear people say, well, you know, the you know who's have an unconditional covenant with the Lord. Uh, my Bible says God divorced Israel. <laughs> They'll freak out. Uh, freak out. Yeah. God put Israel away, gave her a bill of divorce. Yet her treacherous sister Judah feared not, but went and played the harlot also. See, there was a time when Judah was faithful with the Lord. And she watched Israel carried away captive by the Assyrians. But it's only a matter of time. Judah played the harlot too. And it came to pass through the lightness of her whoredom that she defiled the land and committed adultery with sticks and with stocks. Yeah, idolatry. And yet for all this, her treacherous sister Judah hath not turned unto me with her whole heart, but feignedly saith the Lord. You know, they were pretending. And the Lord said unto me, the backsliding Israel hath justified herself more then treacherous Judah. You know, the people that God divorced were better than Judah in some ways. The backsliding Israel hath justified herself more than treacherous Judah. Why didn't God divorce Judah too? Because God made a promise to King David that he would always have a man to sit upon his throne. Verse 12. Go and proclaim these words toward the north and say, Return thou backsliding Israel, saith the Lord, and I will not cause mine anger to fall upon you, for I am merciful, saith the Lord, and I will not keep anger forever. Good thing for me, because boy, I'll tell you what, I'm glad the Lord is merciful and doesn't keep his anger forever because if he did i would have been dead before i got out of high school never would have seen my 18th birthday verse 13 only acknowledge thine iniquity that thou hast transgressed against the lord thy god and hast scattered thy ways to the strangers under every green tree what do they do under every green tree witchcraft people what do witches do they go out in the forest and Practice their little evilness. That's why, you know, they're, uh, they're worshiping Mother Nature, they tell you. But they're really not. They're worshiping the devil. And ye have not obeyed my voice, saith the Lord. Turn, O backsliding children, saith the Lord, for I am married unto you. And I will take you one of a city and two of a family and will bring you to Zion. And I will give you pastors according to my heart, which shall feed you with understanding, uh, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. And it shall come to pass when ye be multiplied and increased in the land in those days, saith the Lord, they shall say no more the ark of the covenant of the Lord. Neither shall it come to mind, neither shall they remember it, neither shall they visit it, neither shall that be done any more. At the time they shall call Jerusalem the throne of the Lord. Now this is future people. Right now, Jerusalem is not the throne of the Lord. The Lord is not sitting on a throne in Jerusalem as king of the world. And all the nations shall be gathered unto it, to the name of the Lord to Jerusalem, neither shall they walk any more after the imagination of their evil heart. In those days, the house of Judah shall walk with the house of Israel. 
and they shall come together out of the land of the north. What's the land of the north? Take a look, people. Israel. Look north of Israel. What's, what's north of Israel? Europe. And they shall come together out of the land of the north to the land that I have given for an inheritance unto your fathers. But I said, how shall I put thee among the children and give thee a pleasant land, a goodly heritage of the host of nations? And I said, thou shalt call me my father and shalt not turn away from me. Surely as a wife treacherously departeth from her husband, so have ye dealt treacherously with me, O house of Israel, saith the Lord. A voice was heard upon the high places, weeping and supplications for the children of Israel, for they have perverted their way, and they have forgotten the Lord their God. Return, ye backsliding children, and I will heal your backslidings. Behold, we come unto thee, for thou art the Lord our God. Truly in vain is salvation hoped for from the hills. What is vain? It, it, it means useless, worthless. Truly in vain is salvation hoped for from the hills and from the multitude of mountains. Truly in the Lord our God is the salvation of Israel. You're not going to find salvation in the hills or the mountains or the, the satanic trees uh, that they're sacrificing. Verse 24, For shame hath devoured the labor of our fathers from our youth, their flocks and their herds, their sons and their daughters. We lie down in our shame, and our confusion covereth us, for we have sinned against the Lord our God. For we have sinned against the Lord our God, we and our fathers from our youth, even unto this day, and have not obeyed the voice of the Lord our God. All right, let's go to Jeremiah 31, 31. Um, in addition to doing playlists on the minor prophets, including Hosea, I've also did an entire commentary on the book of Jeremiah. You got to realize I've been doing Bible studies on tube for, I don't know, 10 years, maybe more, you know, but, um, now remember in Jeremiah three, the Lord got angry with Israel and divorced them. But in Jeremiah 31, he talks about the restoration, which is basically the same theme as uh, Hosea. So, Jeremiah 31, verse 1. At the same time, saith the Lord, will I be the God of all the families of Israel, and they shall be my people. Israel. Israel and Judah. Sometimes Israel just means Israel. Other times Israel means all of Israel and Judah. It depends on the context. Thus saith the Lord, the people which were left of the sword found grace in the wilderness, even Israel, when I went to cause him to rest. You know, left of the sword. You know, when Assyria went in and the Babylonians went in, they killed a bunch of people. Yeah, and then what was left? See, Babylon took Judah into, and Jerusalem into captivity. Assyria years earlier uh, I'm not sure exactly I think it was a hundred years earlier took Israel captive Israel never returned to the land Judah did 70 years after the Assyrian uh, Babylonian captivity you can read about that in the book of Daniel so verse 2 thus saith the Lord uh, the people which were left of the sword found grace in the wilderness, even Israel, when I went to cause him to rest. The Lord hath appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Wow. The Lord is saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. Again, I will build thee, 
and thou shalt be built, O virgin of Israel. Now, wait a minute. How does a harlot, a whore, become a virgin? Only the Lord can do it. Is anything too hard for the Lord? Uh, no. O virgin of Israel, thou shalt again, again be adorned with thy tabrets, and shall go forth in the dances of them that make merry. Tabrets, it's a type of a musical instrument. Thou shalt yet plant vines upon the mountains of Samaria. The planter shall plant and shall eat them as common things. For there shall be a day that the watchmen upon the mount of Ephraim shall cry, Arise ye and let us go up to Zion unto the Lord our God. For thus saith the Lord, Sing with gladness for Jacob, now remember, Jacob's name was changed to Israel. It's interchangeable. Sing with gladness for Jacob and shout among the chief of the nations. Publish ye, praise ye, and say, O Lord, save thy people, the remnant of Israel. Behold, I will bring them from the north country, Europe, and gather them from the coast of of the earth, and with them the blind and the lame, the woman with child, and her that travaileth with child, together a great company shall return thither. See, the Lord is going to lead his people to the land, the promised land, not an Antichrist United Nations in 1948. That's the counterfeit. That's Satan's counterfeit. The Lord himself is going to gather his people together. And from what I can tell, it hasn't happened yet. Verse 9. They shall come with weeping and with supplications will I lead them, and will cause them to walk by the rivers of waters in a straight way, wherein they shall not stumble, for I am a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my first born hear the word of the lord O ye nations and declare it in the isles in the isles afar off why would we he be declaring it in the isles afar off huh how about england scotland ireland greece new zealand australia Isle, the isles afar off. And say, he that scattereth Israel will gather him. See, the Lord scattered Israel all over and will gather him and keep him as a shepherd doth his flock. Who did Jesus say he was? The great shepherd? Yeah. Verse 11, For the Lord hath redeemed Jacob, and ransomed him from the hand of him that was stronger than he. Ransomed him from the hand of him that was stronger than he. Who was stronger than Jacob Israel? The devil. Israel is going to be ransomed by the blood of Christ. Verse 12. Therefore they shall come and sing in the height of Zion, and shall flow together to the goodness of the Lord for wheat and for wine and for oil and for the young of the flock and of the herd. And their soul shall be as a watered garden and they shall not sorrow any more at all. That hasn't happened yet, but it will one day. Then shall the virgin rejoice in the dance, both young men and old together, for I will turn their mourning into joy and will comfort them and make them rejoice from their sorrow. And I will satiate the soul of the priests with fatness, and my people shall be satisfied with my goodness, saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord, a voice was heard in Ramah, lamentation and bitter weeping. Rachel, weeping for her children, refused to be comforted for her children because they were not. Where do we read that? 
Well, in Matthew chapter 2, um, I'm going to give you the short version. Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king. And then the wise men came from the east to Jerusalem. And he says, Where is he born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. So, you know, Herod's like, wait a minute. I'm the king. Who's this newcomer coming? You know, uh, we got to get rid of this guy. So then Herod talked to the you-know-whos and says, where is Christ to be born? And they said, in Bethlehem. And, um, you know, so here it is. Joseph was warned in a dream to uh, flee into Egypt because Herod was going to kill the babies in, in Bethlehem, trying to kill uh, Christ. So let's uh, let's see. Let's start in verse thirteen, Matthew two thirteen. And when they were departed. The wise men. Behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise and take the young child and his mother, and flee into Egypt, and be thou there until I bring thee word, for Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. When he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night, and departed into Egypt, and there and was there until the death of Herod, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of by the Lord the prophet, um, saying, Out of Egypt have I called my son. Then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men, was exceeding wroth and sent forth and slew. He murdered, he killed, and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem and in all the coast thereof from two years old and under, according to the time which he had diligently inquired of the wise men. Then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremy, Jeremiah the prophet, saying, In Ramah, was there a voice heard, lamentation and weeping and great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children and would not be comforted because they were not. There you go. All right, let's go back to Jeremiah 31. Um, verse 15, Thus saith the Lord, a voice was heard in Ramah, lamentation and bitter weeping. Rachel, weeping for her children, refused to be comforted for her children because they were not. Thus saith the Lord, Refrain thy voice from weeping and thine eyes from tears, for thy work shall be rewarded, saith the Lord, and they shall come again from the land of the enemy. Now, remember, people, all these young babies that were murdered, abortions, whatever, Herod's killings, they're all going to come and be able to grow up during the millennium, the thousand year reign of Christ, without Satan, with Satan being bound. So they're going to get one heck of an education. And I pray that I'm going to be a part of it. So I'm hoping. Verse 17. And there is hope in thine end, saith the Lord, that the children shall come again to their own border. I have surely heard Ephraim bemoaning himself thus. Thou hast chastised me, and I was chast chastened. As a bullock unaccustomed to, unaccust, unaccustomed to the yoke, turn thou me, and I shall be turned, for thou art the Lord my God. Surely after that I was turned, I repented. And after that I was instructed, I smote upon my thigh. I was shamed, I was ashamed, yea, even confounded, because I did bear the reproach of my youth. I can relate to this. Yeah. 20. Is Ephraim my dear son? Is he a pleasant child? For since I spake against him, I do earnestly remember him still. Therefore my bowels are troubled for him. I will surely have mercy upon him, saith the Lord. Set thee up waymarks, make thee high heaps, set thine heart toward the highway, even the way which thou wentest. Turn again, O virgin of Israel, turn again to these thy cities. What are waymarks? Um, you know, it's like street signs. You know, letting you know where you're going, where you've been. 
22. How long wilt thou go, O back, thou backsliding daughter? For the Lord hath created a new thing in the earth. A woman shall compass a man. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, as yet they shall use this speech in the land of Judah and in the cities thereof, when I shall bring again their captivity. The Lord bless thee, O habitation of justice and mountain of holiness. A mountain of holiness. And there shall dwell in Judah itself and in all the cities thereof, husbandmen and they that go forth with flocks. For I have satiated the weary soul and have replenished every sorrowful soul. Upon this I awakened and beheld, and my sleep was sweet unto me. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will sow the house of Israel and the house of Judah with the seed of man and with the seed of beast. So the Lord's going to evidently mix up Israel and Judah with the seed of man, uh, non-Israel, and with the seed of beast. Hmm. What about the seed of beast? Well, you'll have to go to my World Truth video channel to see about the seed of beast, because I dare not utter a word about that. Uh on my tube channel and it shall come to pass that like as I have watched over them to pluck up and to break down and to throw down and to destroy and to afflict so will I watch over them to build and to plant saith the Lord in those days they shall say no more the fathers have eaten a sour grape and the children's teeth are set at edge but every one shall die for his own iniquity. Every man that eateth the sour grapes, his teeth shall be set on age. Listen carefully, people. Listen carefully. This is something that totally destroys by itself the Hebrew roots movement. Totally destroys it. The Yahuwah crowd. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant. N-E-W. New. Not renew. Read the book of Hebrews. Hebrews said that uh, if the law of Moses would have been able to save, there would have been no need for a new covenant. But it couldn't save. The law of Moses cannot save you. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the, in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break. See, they broke the covenant, not the Lord. Although I was an husbandman, a husband unto them, saith the Lord. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their God and they shall be my people. The law is going to be in their hearts. What group of people have the law in their hearts? You want the law in your hearts or do you want it on a table of tablet of stone? 34. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them unto the greatest of them, saith the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. The Lord's going to forgive and forget. Thus saith the Lord, which giveth the sun for a light by day, and the ordinances of the moon and of the stars for a light by night, which divideth the sea when the waves thereof roar, the Lord of hosts is his name. If those ordinances depart from before me, saith the Lord. In other words, if the sun quits shining and the stars 
don't give off their lights anymore. Then the seed of Israel also shall cease from being a nation before me forever. As long as the sun's in the sky, people, Israel will be a nation as far as the Lord's concerned. 37. Thus saith the Lord, if heaven above can be measured and the fountains of the earth searched out beneath, I will also cast off all the seed of Israel for all that they have done, saith the Lord. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that the city shall be built to the Lord from the tower of Hananiel unto the gate of the corner, and the measuring line shall yet go forth over against it upon the hill Gerub, and shall compass about to Goath. And the whole valley of the dead bodies, and of the ashes, and all the fields, unto the brook of Kidron, unto the corner of the horse gate toward the east, shall be holy unto the Lord. It shall not be plucked up, nor thrown down any more forever. Uh, is that area in the Middle East holy unto the Lord now? No. No. This is going to be future, people. So... All right, uh, who are the saints? Those that are in the Lord. Those that have found mercy and forgiveness of iniquity and sin. Those that love the Lord. Yeah. And it seems to be a smaller and smaller group every year. So... All right, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' precious name. Amen. This is part three of Saints, uh, Hosea chapter 11. In Jesus' name, amen.